I'm going to start answering that question by looking at um, John chapter 1 verse 12, the very introduction of the concept of what happens to an individual when he receives Christ. I'll start from verse 11, John chapter 1 verse 11 and then 12. He said, He came to his own and his own received him not, but as many as received him, to them give he power to become the sons of God. Power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now the word translated power there is the Greek word exousia, which is translated elsewhere in the Bible as the word authority. Some translations read this as right, that as many as received him, as many as received Christ, to them give he power, to them give he authority to become to be transformed or metamorphosed to the status of sons of God. Now, first of all, I need to define what the Son of God is. And by so doing, I'm going to have to look at what the Bible says after Jesus had um, healed the blind man in John chapter 5. At a point, they wanted to stone Jesus in John chapter 5, and they said, Jesus said, for all the good works that I did, for which one do you want to stone me? And they said, for a good work we stone thee not. He said, but for calling yourself the Son of God, Therefore, making yourself equal with God. For that we stone you. Now, when that was said, Jesus did not contradict what they said. Jesus did not say what they said was wrong. To the Jew, they know that to claim sonship with God is to actually say you are operating from the level of equality with God. Not equality as in the same measure of power, but equality as in the same um, how will I call it, frequency flowing from the same level of operation or thought. It's not talking about magnitude, but it's talking about manner. When you say you are a son of God, you are actually saying you are the product of God, which means what God can do to a large extent you can do. Just like every, every creature has children that resemble them. A dog gives birth to a dog. A cow gives birth to a cow. If you say you are a son of God, then you are actually saying that you fall in the same class of being as God. You understand? Of course we know that God is the most high. The most high is above all. But we are given the right to flow at the same level of operation as being in the class of God. Now, that's not a shock because the very introduction of man in Genesis chapter 1 verse 6 says, that God made man in his image and after his likeness. That's what God designed when he said, let us make man in, his, in our own image and after our likeness. And so the Bible already had begun to describe the original plan of God, that God was creating man as a class of being at his own level. But for us to understand the authority, we need to understand the word that Jesus used. The word used is a, the word exousia. And exousia, if you look at the Strong's Expository Dictionary, exousia is described in the sense of ability as privilege. It's described as privilege. It gives us the privilege to become the sons of God or the capacity. The capacity, the word exousia means capacity. And so when he says the capacity, he's talking about the capability of God. God gives us the right to share in his own ability. He gives us the right to share in his own authority. He gives us the right to share in his nature. So when we say the believer's authority, we are talking about the right whereby the believer can exercise the same privileges as God. And that comes in so many dimensions. So if we really want to look at it, we will discover that it's talking about competency. That word exclusion means competency. That God allows us to have the same competency as he does. Paul said in the book of Philippians chapter 1 verse 13, he said, I can do all things 
through Christ that strengthens me. And so, Exodia speaks for comp competency, it speaks of freedom, it speaks of mastery. And in the definition here, it speaks of magistrate. Now, if you look at the word magistrate, in those days it would speak of a principality or a ruler of a local government, a territorial force, a territorial authority. The police would be under him. The tax collectors would be under him. The magistrate is one who has the right to judge, to execute judgment, to make decisions on matters. Are you listening to me? Yes. Now, when we look at this, you see, the believer's authority is in so many dimensions. Because of the brief nature of the question and answer session, I just want to skim through some things. I believe it's a subject that will take at a stretch. But I need you to look at this. When we talk about magistrates, we're talking about the right to execute judgment or to make decisions. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 that he that is spiritual judges all things, yet is judged of no one. He that is spiritual is able to make the right assessment of all things. And the Bible says further on that who has known the mind of God, that he will counsel him. And then he concludes by saying, but we have the mind of Christ. If you read the Darby translation, you will see that there's a footnote in the Darby translation where it says, the mind of Christ there is the intelligent faculty of Christ. And having it, it puts us in a position to be able to give God counsel. Now somebody is going to find that a bit overblown now. I mean, how can man counsel God? The Bible says, who has known the mind of God, that he would counsel him. But if you read the Bible, prayer is actually man counseling God. Prayer is man telling God, this is what we, what, this is what we want done. You understand? Looking at this situation, Lord, we would want intervention this way, we would want inter intervention this way. It's like counsel. Besides, in the Old Testament, God gave Moses a liberty. When God wanted to wipe out the children of Israel, Moses stood before God and said, God, far be it from you. If you do this, they will say it's because you lack ability. Moses was given the right to stand before God and raise counsel. So I don't think it's something that should be scary. The believer actually has authority to raise counsel on God. Isaiah, 60, Isaiah 44, if you read it somewhere in Isaiah 44, the Bible talks about God that happens on, that performs the counsel of his what? Messengers. And so the believer or the believer's authority includes the ability to magistrate over issues, to say these are the affairs of life, but we are issuing decrees concerning this. This is what we want and to pass judgment as to what should happen or not happen. Now, if you look at it, you see the word, you see the word there, uh, 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 jurisdiction. Jurisdiction speaks about territor territorial authority. When dealing with demons, we have what you call principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Four classes of evil spirits or demons. Now, these are authorities, they are powers. Now, when you talk about principalities, a principality, a principality is a ruler of a particular area. The president of Nigeria is a principality. But the Bible also says something interesting, that Christ is the head of all principality. But we know that not everybody submits to the headship of Christ. It's just like when the Bible says the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Christ is my King, but he's not the King to the other person who has not received him as a King. But if he says he's King of Kings, invariably that also means I'm a King. If he says he's Lord of Lords, then I am a Lord because I have received him as Lord and he is Lord over Lords. I mean, that gives me the impression, and somebody would argue with that, but if you read Revelations, the book of Revelations chapter 1, the Bible says he has made us kings and priests. So if he has made us kings and priests, then we have authority of kingship. The believer's authority is multifaceted. If you read Luke chapter 10, the Bible talks about authority over demons. If you read Mark 11, the Bible talks about authority, Mark 11, 22, 23, 24, it talks about authority over elements, authority over mountains, authority over fig trees, things we would call non-living things or inanimate objects, authority over them. Jesus spoke to the winds and the winds obeyed. And the same authority Christ has, he handed over to the believer in his name. And that's what the Bible is saying here when he says, 
as many as received him, to them give he the authority to operate as sons of God or to become sons of God. If sons of God, then if God said, let there be light, a degree of that ability to say, let there be light and there is light, would also exist in the Son. The authority of, Christ, of, of the believer is manifested in so many phases. But it talks about the ability to orchestrate things at a superhuman level. Because the word that also speaks about superhuman authority or ability, rights. Now, we must understand authority as different from power, in a sense. You see, um, authority does not necessarily mean you have the strength. Authority is the right to control, the right to command, the right to decide. And when a believer, when one becomes a believer, it is the very first thing that a believer ought to learn. You ought to understand that unlike when you were in the world, you now have authority to move certain things in the realm of the spirit, in the realm of the spirit, in, in the realm of the natural. The believer has authority to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cleanse lepers, to perform supernatural feats in the name of the Lord Jesus. And every believer ought to be conscious of this authority. The Bible tells us that whatsoever we bind on earth or whatsoever we prohibit on earth will be prohibited in heaven. The whatsoever we lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Now, the, 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 the Greek translation actually gives us a, a, a different tense to it. It says, whatsoever we lose on earth shall already have been loosed in heaven. In other words, heaven preempts what we are going to do and goes ahead to do it even before we do it. You understand what I'm saying? You see, the thing about it is we will find out that the believer has the authority to summon God. He said, for where two or more are gathered in my name, there will I what? Be. In the Bible, all through the Bible, you see people calling on the name of the Lord. The believer has the authority to summon God into situations, into circumstances. There are so many things. It's, it's, it's such a wide subject. But this is just a brief summary on it. Uh-huh.